Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. I got a request, it's been a long time ago, but somebody asked me they wanted to know some more tricks on framing square. And if you're a fan of the show, you know that one of my favorite tools is the speed square. You can tell by this one and the two I got hanging up behind me that I like speed squares. I think they were an ingenious design of utility and design. The man who invented the speed square, Albert Swanson, uh, this is back in the early 20s when it was invented, he took three basic layout tools and turned them into one. One of them being the framing square, which this right here was about the only reliable layout tool they had back then. The other two being combination square, and this is the square head on the combination square. It has two other parts, it has a protractor, and it also has a center finder. And then the last one they took was a tri square, which is one of these. And this is a machinist square, it's not a real tri square. But the principle is the same, is it was, a, it was able to stand up on its own, just like the speed square can. And it can, the speed square can find angles just like the combination square could. And the speed square could find pitches of roofs just like the frame square could. So it was an ingenious design. Very, very good design. And also, it could do something that all three of these couldn't do was fit in your back pocket. I uh, heard a famous quote one time uh, that Mr. Albert said was one size fits all pockets. So, genius tool, but today is not about this tool. It's about the predecessor, which is the framing square. I'm going to give you all a little bit of the basics on it, what it's good for. Um, some things that it does really, really well, a lot better than any other tool. So we're going to break it down and take a look at it. So let's get started. One real cool thing about the framing square is it's real, real good at fast layout. And what I mean by that is if you take the body here and square it up to the edge of the board, you just kind of hold it over crooked on the side of the board, you can draw two parallel lines one on one side and one on the other side of the tongue. Now this tongue is inch and a half wide, which is what most two by uh, stock is made out of, whether it be two by eight, two by 12, two by four, doesn't matter. After that, you can pull it down a little bit, keep your square square on your stock, and you can make another parallel line. Now, this is real handy when you're laying out, say, a plate wall plate when you're wanting to do rafter and joist layout. So you put J on one of them and you put R on the other one. And then while your square is still on that line, you can come down say 16 inches or 24 inches depending on where you're, you're going with it. We'll just say 16. So you'll have 16 on center. Come down. Lay your square back up there again, and then mark it out. And then come down one more, and do it again. And there's your rafter and joist. Now, that is a whole lot faster than taking a tape measure and measuring in between centers and then taking your square out again and then marking it. So this is a very, very fast production tool in speed layout. All right, we got a rafter mounted, and we'll show you how to lay out common rafter on with the framing square. Now we're going to set this pitch right here at eight and twelve. So on your framing square, what you're going to have to do is get yourself a set of stair gauges, and they're just little brass, little set screws, more or less, that just attach to your to your square. I was going to show you kind of how they go on there. Uh, if you can read on the scale, it's probably really hard to tell. Here's 10, 11, here's 12, and you'll just stick it right on the edge of the line. It's got a nice little square edge to put it on and just tighten it down. And then the same thing you're going to do on the 8. Just put them on the outsides, on the inside of the square. And it's kind of iffy until you do one and then there's nothing to it. But I'm going to set the square over here for our plumb cut that's going to be on the ridge. So I'm going to move the camera in a little bit so you can take a look. 
Okay, we got the framing square set up here on the end of the rafter. We've got it at 8 and 12, and all you want to do is just get it flush to the corner, the outside corner of the rafter, and just draw you a plumb line, which this is going to be plumb when it's attached to the, your building. So from there, you're going to take a tape measure and measure down from this corner, and you'll hook down and go down as far as you need to go. Okay, we've moved the square down to where our seat cut is going to be, which was four foot down from where we said we were. Now then, I've drawn a little bit of, drawn a little indication line here where foot, four foot is. So all you got to do is line that up with the edge of the rafter. I got a bad spot where it looks like a forklift hit it. And uh, we're just going to draw our line right there. Now, while you're still here, Go ahead and mark up an inch and a half from the bottom. You don't have to move your square for this. If you come over here, you can measure up using the scale. So I see there's, there's four and a half right there. There's where our line's gonna be. So that should be close to inch and a half. All you gotta do is move your square down, use the body, and draw this little mark out right here. And there's your seat cut and that'll be your waste material. Now here's the other cool thing about the speed square, I mean, excuse me, about the framing square, is you can line up a whole number back here and you can cut your, your length for your soffit and fascia. So say if we wanted, uh, let's say four inches, the eight's right here, you can count up four inches. So one, two, three, four, you can make a mark here Drag the square down, make sure we're still in the shot. Drag the square down, and you can draw the plumb line that's gonna cut for your fascia. Now then, you can come back and hook up your, your plumb cut off of your seat cut cross that line in and there this will be your waist and this will be your waist this right here you've just cut all you've just laid out everything for your soffit and your fascia and you did that without really using a tape measure and nothing else than a framing sawyer very very handy tool very very fast too one last thing I was going to show is this is a 90 degree tool. I mean, that's its primary objective. If you use your stair gauges and you place them exactly the same distance apart from their center, this right here will always be 45 degrees. What I'm meaning by that is if you come up three inches and you go over three inches, that's 45 degrees on this plane. And same as for that plane. So knowing that information, you can use this for a number of applications for different things. You can use it for stair layout, which I would show, but I don't have any lumber big enough. But I was gonna show it on this right here. This is real, real common practice on pipe. And it wouldn't be on PVC, it'd be on steel. But if you don't know, or if you're trying to get some form of coupling or fitting on a 45 degree slant, you can set your stair gauges up here, take another square or just a straight edge, it doesn't even have to be a square. You can place it across those two stair gauges, like so, come up, and you can check if that's 45 degrees or not. And you can check it across multiple points across the face. Now, knowing this information, if you get your ratios right, which you'll have to do some math in order to do that, but you can move these back and forth and get different angles. I'll show you a demonstration. If you take something that will predict your angle movement, like this speed square, place it on something straight, you can turn it to whatever degree that you want it. I'm going to put this one at 30 degrees and just draw a line. Okay, we've got a 30 degree line, I know that's hard to see. 
but you can take your fragment square and you just have to adjust your stair gauges. And there you go, you have your 30 degrees. I got my other stair gauge way out here. But you can use the same method that I showed before with the pipe and it will come out the same. Okay, just got my stair gauges set to 30 degrees. We'll place it in front of this block. Take our other framing square. Or anything that's straight, as I said before. Place it on your stair gauges, and you notice that we've got some gap in between there, so you, you'll have to either raise this up or you can bring this piece to that one since this leg here is true. And it looks like we got a little bit of gap. That may be because I didn't get very square on the table. But you can do any degree that you can come up with as long as you've got an accurate way to read it uh, through a layout process but it works and it's pretty cool I just double checked this measurement the little bit of light that we saw up here at the top turns out my saw is uh, out one degree so um, this method right here was very very accurate well guys I hope you all enjoyed it hope you got something out of it it's some of the techniques I showed you were kind of unusual ones and you won't see them very often, but nonetheless, they're, they're good techniques for a good tool. Once again, um, here from Classic Work, thank y'all for watching. Like, subscribe to me if you like, and uh, check out my, uh, I have a Facebook page now. Um, just type in Classic Work, all one word, and it'll bring you right to it. You can see all my newest videos. Uh, I'm going to try to and get them uploaded and share them through there and you can see some of the uh, later projects that I built back in the good old days as they say and uh, you can comment there if you like um, if you have any requests or anything just tell me I'll be glad to do a video on it and uh, well once again y'all take care I'll see y'all next time